I'm Dr. Lori. I'm at the Cape Cancer Thrift Shop in West Barnstable, Massachusetts. Come thrift with me. Let's see what we can find. A couple of some lighthouses. I did visit the lighthouses while I was here in Cape Cod because you have to. I like this look. Kind of old, kind of nice. Look how it's hand built inside. See the ridges inside? The ridges inside indicate that, of course, the piece is hand built. It's hand glazed inside and out. If it's glazed inside the pitcher, it means that whatever goes in the pitcher is going to go inside of you. So that's a pretty typical element. Let's see what it's got on the bottom. On the bottom, it's International Mesa, and it's handcrafted in Hungary, and it has its original label on it. I'm going to start to move it to see if I can find a... Oh, hey, five. Five's great. Five's great for that. Hungarian little piece of hand-built pottery. I would say that picture is probably, remember, measure with your hands. My hands are six inches, so I'd say that's seven inches tall. And for $5, you're going to get 40 out of that. So we're in New England, and uh, I wouldn't pass by, I wouldn't be in New England if I didn't find some pewter. So here we are with this. And notice the shape. The shape is a very typical shape for teapots. This one has a wooden handle, and this is pewter. This pewter happens to also be from Providence, Rhode Island, which is nearby, um, from the Gorham Company. I'll show you the mark. So a nice lid, and see here how it's cast very well? This is a high quality casting, too. It doesn't just, it doesn't, it isn't flat here. It has this indentation so it actually fits in to this part. Let me move this stuff so you can see what I'm talking about. This is what you're seeing. And inside, this is why you gotta dig. So that was inside of it. Probably didn't even know that was inside of it, which is also another piece. But see this right here, this area, which fits right up against this area, that's a higher quality casting. So when they make the actual mold for the casting of this, they're actually looking at and making sure that when this closes, it's tight and it's, and it's actually the match. So if this pin came out, you'd still have the right lid, and that's very important. So quality pieces do this. Who's the quality manufacturer? Gorham, of, of course. Right here, you've got Gorham pewter. Let me see if I got it upside down, right foot up. You can see Gorham pewter, which is manufactured in the, this is from the 1970s, and you're going to see this revival right now. Pewter and colonial forms like this are going to be important during the revival, which is coming up in 2026. The revival of, of course, the fight for independence. So the colonial revival period is going to happen again, so these colonial pieces are going to become very desirable and valuable at that time. So collect them now so you can resell them if you choose to around 2026. So this is a good example. It has a wooden handle, and of course it is all pewter made by Gorham. What do they want for it? Three dollars. Three dollars. Now, on today's market, you can get 50. In 2026, you're going to get 150. Oh my gosh, right. I always tell you when to, what to actually purchase now to hold on to for later. I did that with Art Deco. I was telling everybody in the early 2000s, buy the Art Deco pieces now from the 1920s because they're going to be valuable in 2020. The people who listened to me made a killing. This is the same type of thing. Colonial American pieces are going to see a revival and a spike in 2026. So get them now while they're cheap at $3 cheap, and then you're going to resell them for more. There are a couple of other pieces here also of this same type. So for example, you have a small finger bowl here, also in pewter, and a larger pot, also in pewter. That's a nice piece. The tray is also manufactured and is pewter. In this particular rare case, it does go together. And then this, of course, is a shaker. And this one with all the holes is actually for sugar, where you would put powdered sugar or brown sugar onto a breakfast bread, like a banana bread, like a waffle, like a um, corn bread. But that's what that is. That is not salt or pepper. Don't get confused. There's only supposed to be one of them. And it's a very typical, classically, um, classically colonial American style. So don't miss this. Don't miss pewter. It's, gonna, it's making a big comeback. This piece, which I would never walk by, I would never walk by 
a beautiful brass and Lennox china chandelier. And you're right, this is on sale for 100 bucks. It looks like all the pieces are behind it. It's a big six arm, each arm, of course, chandelier. I've said this for decades. Your realtor is trying to sell your house, and they say just keep the, the lighting fixtures there because the lighting fixtures can't possibly have value. I have told many people, Lone Fox, he was buying a new house, and, I, and he said, Dr. Lori, can you appraise these lighting fixtures for me? Because I have no idea. A lot of money in the lighting fixtures. So the light fixtures, the chandeliers, the sconces in your home. Oh, they've always been in the house. I'll leave them with the house. Fine, but then get paid for them if you're leaving them with the house. The chandelier here by Lennox, they're relatively rare. A lot of people do not have them anymore. Um, but this one is brass with, of course, the characteristic cream color Lennox ceramic. Very nice. A hundred bucks is a steal for it. It even has individual shades. Each one of these shades in this condition is going to be 35 bucks. So you have that money. Then you have the chandelier itself. All the fittings are back here. You can see them here in the plates. So here's the plate. I don't want to get too in there. They've got them. They've got them. Ugh. There's got them taped down. Do you see this? So they've got them taped down. I don't want to start taking tape apart. But this is really gorgeous. All of the um, all the shades are here. There's a shade down there. All you need is an electrician and to get it wired. That's a beautiful piece. What's it worth? Seven hundred and fifty dollars. So for your hundred dollar investment here at the thrift store. I'm finding you a real bargain, and I'm leaving it here for you because that's what I do. I'm not competing with everybody, and I'm not picking up my, my phone and going, here's what it's selling for on this online platform or that online platform of people who don't know what the market is, who are just saying, oh, I just have to get rid of it. You know, that piece, 750 bucks, based on sales records where similar pieces have sold. That's a really nice piece. Um, people might say, oh, it's not my style. It doesn't have to be your style. It has to be the style of the buyer and you will find that buyer. At a hundred bucks, that's a, that is a real bargain. That's beautiful. And then, you know, look for the colors, right? So how about some pink depression glass? And here's a nice example. Pretty. Pink is pretty popular. Again, look at the squared off. You've got these curved square plate, curved edges. And it looks like you've got two. And they're putting these together with a, as a set. And it does look like it is indeed a set. So there's one, and there's two. So two is good. At least you don't have just one sitting there. Fifteen dollars for the set of three of depression glass. And the nice decoration. I don't see any scratches. That's what you're looking for. You're looking for scratches. Well, there's a big scratch somewhere. So for the set of three, so two of these, right? The set of three, you're looking at fifteen bucks. I think that's very nice. And again, this is pressed glass. Right? It's not iridescent glass, and it's colored glass. Pink, very popular. Green, very popular. The colors of depression glass. And remember, depression glass is made well after the depression. So for $15, this set of three, about $45. Um, and I wouldn't walk by here without looking at something rather contemporary. These are actually marketed in Neiman Marcus, um, of course, the very high-end store. And you can see that they are new but they are, well, they are newer, right? So they're early 21st century, um, but they're the full set in the box. And these are collectible because a lot of people look for these pieces. Um, and you can see that here's the original box of them, even with these. I hate these things because these things retain heat. So if you have these next to your dishes, never a good idea. People do still use them. I always say throw them out because they retain heat. And if they retain heat, moisture is going to get trapped and it's going to damage this area if they're on top of your plates. But this is Neiman Marcus, so these are in the high-end stores and they're pretty collectible. People will put sky-high ridiculous numbers on them on like the online platforms. They'll go $500 for the set, this kind of thing. They don't sell for that, but they do sell for about $150. So here's a $10 price for four of them. So 10 bucks for four to make 150 with the original box, that's a good deal. But it's not the crazy, silly numbers that people put up going, oh, it was from Neiman Marcus, it must be $500 because that store like has these big high prices. That's not happening. That's not what the market will bear. And my appraisals tell you what people actually paid. I'm over here to show you what you should could leave here. The reproduction carnival glass plate. You could leave it here. Six dollars. It's pretty. It's azure. That's that blue. Uh, iridescent glass, but it's not a great piece of carnival glass. Uh, I would say leave it. 
um, it's not worth more than 10 bucks. It's a reproduction and a, a, a mediocre reproduction at that. What I do like is what's on either side, right? Beautiful detail pieces. So Imari style, right? Made in China in the early 20th century. What's Imari style? Look at the, look at the greenery. Look at the hand painting. Look at the peony flowers in the middle. And then the, the saucer has a very similar design. Teeny tiny miniaturization. The Asians are great at, of course, miniaturization. These are made in Japan. And they are made, of course, of China. Right, so it says China on the bottom, not for the place, but actually for the material. It's porcelain here, and I really like that. For two dollars, that one's worth fifteen for the for the pair. This is Nippon, so this piece is called luster wear, and you can see the luster all the way around here, which is that sort of pearlescence look. Look at the bright white, what's called paper porcelain. When you look through it, it almost looks like you're holding up a sheet of paper. That's nicely done too. And these pieces, this one's about $10 for that piece. That piece dates from the 1940s. Oh, and I forgot to tell you that this is early 20th century, so dates between 1910 and about 1925. Yeah, no. Okay, no. Uh, what did I think? I actually thought that that was a Charles Wysocki for a minute. Um, uh, Ralph Cahoon, those are the artists, of course, on Cape Cod. Um, and it's not the artist that was the issue. Um, this particular piece is a nice piece, but with the loop, I wanted to see all the consistent dots, a very low quality um, mechanical print. So I'm leaving it there. There you go. Uh, so that was what I was thinking. If you're, everyone says, Dr. Lori, what are you thinking when you see these pieces? So that's what I was thinking. Similarly, when I looked up here, just as I was doing that thinking, I was thinking, that's a good artist. That's somebody who knows what they're doing. That's a trained artist who's working in abstraction. Um, now, many people might say, I, I don't understand what it is. I don't, get, I don't get it. But it's nice coloration. It's nice use of color. It's nice use of palette knife. Um, they want $24 for each one. I think they're worth $150 for each one. But um, what really brought me here is like every other woman in the world, and I know all the guys who are watching are going to go, oh, no, not pillows. I, too, have a million pillows in my house. I like pillows. I like these pillows. And I like them, sure, for the nostalgia of me being a kid on Cape Cod. I like them for the fact that they look like the 1980s. I mainly like them because they are all, in, they are all needlepoint. Needlepoint pillows like these, very desirable, very resaleable. I see them go for so much money online. $16. They look like they're in good shape. And me, I love pets. I don't have dogs because I travel too much. I don't think it would be fair to an animal. But the smell doesn't smell of anything. Odor is very important with respect to resale. These are really beautiful. They're $16 each. For $32, you could get $100 each on these easily, especially if you sell them between April 30th and August 1st. Okay, When you sell these online will be important too. Notice the pattern coordinates, but they are not an exact set. One, of course, is at the beach. One, of course, is the sailboat. I think these are beautiful. And they're not stained, and they don't smell. They're really nicely done. Here's the back with the zipper. I could do the needlepoint part, but I can't do the whole zipper make it a pillow part. So I always need somebody to do that. But those are really nice and uh, a very good bargain here. Those are definitely a bargain. For those of us who are girls who like a lot of pillows, you know. I was brought over here by the yellow, because we always look at blue, but yellow also, primary colors make a nice look. But now, coming over here, I'm looking at the Roman shades, which are three bucks. So if you were to buy these, that's a $75 Roman shade that they want $3 for. Now, granted, it has to be your color scheme, but there are two of them, and uh, they're pretty nice, I have to say. They were on sale at the Christmas tree shops for $9.99, but if you were paying retail, you would basically be paying a lot more than that for those. So I'm walking by this shelf and I'm thinking, okay, well, nothing great up here. <laughs> you got to look up. I always tell you to look up. You got to look up. So right here. What don't I like? I don't like it that close to that light. That light is going to damage everything up here. And that's the same thing for lights in your china cabinet at your house. But that piece is beautiful and that piece is Italian. That piece of glass, a big glass vase like that. Look at all the gold. Look at the gold flex within it. You can see it sparkling. That's a beautiful piece, a big piece of Italian glass. That piece dates to the 1970s, the early 1980s. 
value on that piece is $300. I don't know how much it is. 28 bucks. You know I found treasures. I left them for you. There's more to come.